Hey, is this thing on? Oh, hey, 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 everybody, you know <clears throat> what time it is. It's time for Humble the Hobo Joker today. Listen, before we get to laughing and me slapping, eye popping, and gut busting, let's, let's have a little conversation. Is that all right? Can we have a conversation about something that I, I just don't understand? So maybe y'all fine folks out there in Wonderland can help me understand about this current situation. You see, I've got an infestation of information turned into education because I've been doing some observating about the current situation of today's population that produced a new generation that without hesitation and no identification, they get themselves in a really bad situation. What am I talking about? Well, back when today's generation that produced a new population when that new population when y'all were little when y'all were just getting out of diapers and finding out that boogers really don't taste like chicken mama and daddy told y'all don't ever get in the car with the stranger well then y'all got a little bit older you know you thought you knew it all and you finally you finally put your right shoe on the right foot and all that kind of stuff mama and daddy told y'all listen don't ever meet anybody alone that you met on the internet well, then y'all got old and got grown and left home and y'all was on your phone trying to roam. And then y'all done came up with this thing called Duber. Now, Duber is about the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. Because Duber is you get on that inner pool web thing and you order a stranger you never met and you get into a car with somebody you don't know. Now, listen, I, I can't, I, that don't make no sense to me. But hey, who am I? I'm just humble to hobo. I'm trying to get all this stuff figured out. Listen, let me drop some education on you because I got an infestation of information from a lot of observation. Don't get yourself in a bad situation. You better stop and do some hesitation, get some information. Here we go, folks. Today's joke comes up from Charlotte, North Carolina, from a Tom Railer, a Mr. Tom Railer from Charlotte, North Carolina. This joke is about birds. Listen. Some of y'all out there flying birds, and you don't have a license to be flying birds. Because if you had a license to fly birds, you'd have wings. Listen, put the birds up, because, you know, behind every bird's a pile of droppings. You see what I'm saying? I'm trying to get on the... i trying to get on that Eisenhower Highway system the other day ago, and I had... I had my wind-up moped at a maximum 32.1 mile an hour. I mean, I was giving her all she got, and I tried to merge onto that Eisenhower road system, and but well, y'all started flying birds at me. Now, y'all didn't have no wings. I seen some droppings. And then I got on down in, in, into the city limits and got there off that Eisenhower interchange and got down there at the, the corner of McDowell and Charlotte Street. And You know, I was trying to make it through the intersection. I can't help but the light turn red and Right there, I was in the middle of the intersection, and from all four corners, y'all start flying them birds. And then I finally made it down to the angles to get me a bit to eat, and I was trying to count my pennies and my nickels out of my wallet, and I dropped a few on the ground, and there y'all go flying them birds again. Let me tell you something. You don't have a right to fly a bird unless you've got wings, and if you take notice, when everywhere a bird flies, he leaves a pile of droppings. So look out, people, besides. All you're doing is dropping your IQ number all over the place. We know. Ha! Hey, let, let, let's just get on with the joke of the day. Y'all can't handle anything serious and overload the brain there. Here we go, folks. Thanks for tuning in. And joke about birds. I'll let y'all determine if it's even funny or not. One day, an elderly old pastor confides in his congregation that he's feeling quite lonely and depressed. So one of his members suggests to the pastor that he buy a pet. Thinking this is a grand idea, the pastor hurries into town, and after much deliberation, he buys a parrot. Unfortunately, not five minutes after arriving home, that parrot begins to cuss. After about an hour, it becomes too much for that pastor to take. So that pastor walks up and smacks the parrot right in the beak and says, shut your face, stop cussing. This just makes that parrot madder than before. And that parrot starts swearing and cussing in the most colorful language the pastor can't even believe his ears. Finally, the pastor has had enough. He says, all right, then. 
That pastor who's now aggravated grabs his blanket, throws the blanket over the bird's cage and tells that bird to shut up. Well, this really infuriates that parrot, and that parrot starts throwing himself all over the cage, rocking the cage back and forth. He's clawing and chewing and knocking. Finally, the pastor removes the blanket, and immediately that parrot starts right in on that pastor again, cussing. By this time, the pastor is so infuriated that he grabs the parrot by the throat and throws him in the freezer. Well, the parrot starts swearing again. And he's thrashing around, tearing up everything in the freezer. He can hear ice cubes being thrown, ice cream jugs being turned over, corn and green beans flying everywhere. And just as he's thinking and listening to all this, it gets very quiet in that freezer. At first, the pastor's glad. But then he starts to think that the parrot may have seriously injured himself. He becomes so worried that he runs over and opens the freezer door and the parrot climbs out of the freezer, flaps the ice off of his wings, and says, Pastor, I'm awful sorry about that language. I won't cuss anymore. The pastor is astounded. He can't believe the sudden transformation that a little cold air brought to this bird. Finally, the parrot turns to the pastor later and says, Hey, preacher, what did the chicken do?